Now we're going to look at the reproductive system. First, we'll look at the female reproductive system. Here's our list. It's short. The female reproductive system includes the ovary, the uterine horns, the uterine body, and the vagina. Then we'll do the male reproductive system. That includes the penis, the testes, the scrotum, and the ductus deferens. Notice on both of these lists that the testes and the ovaries are also included in the endocrine system, as they are the gonads that produce hormones. Right. So let's look at the female reproductive system. It's very similar to the male reproductive system. In that, let's draw the two gonads. We'll label this the female reproductive system. or just structures. So these are the female reproductive structures in the fetal pig. Here's the left ovary. Here's the right ovary. This lab list leaves out many structures, um, but as we are moving into the reproductive system lecture, you'll see structures like fimbriae and uterine tube instead of fallopian tube, and then eventually uh, we'll get into follicular genesis, etc. But for lab, we're just going to see this set up here. This may look familiar. All right, so the female uh, fetal pig will have ovaries. I've drawn them much larger than they actually are. When you see them in the fetal pig, they're going to look like this, maybe not even that big, and there'll be a lot of swirly tubes, and then it will, let me just draw how it was, it's probably going to look in the fetal pig. Like this, there'll be a structure here, and then there'll be a structure there. So this is more typical of how it will look, but I've enlarged it so that you can be sure not to miss the ovary. The ovary is attached to the what what we used to call fallopian tube but now have been renamed uterine tube because that's more specific in the fetal pig however we're going to call these uterine horns the ones you can more easily locate in laboratory are the uterine horn and remember that the uh, fetal pig or the pig the dog cat they all uh, gestate their young in these tubes. So kittens, pups, uh, fetal pigs would all, uh, because they have multiple litters, would all, would all uh, develop inside the uterine horns, not in the uterus. This is the uterus. And the uterus, just like it does in other mammals, leads to the vagina. And that leads out the exit. So that's the female reproductive structure of the pig, and it'll be behind the urethra and in front of the rectum. And so let's look at these structures as we would see them in a patient, just to be certain that we are all on the same page. Don't be deceived by the apparent simplicity of this, uh, this structure. Uh, only because the complexity comes with fertilization and then also making a person. Right. So that's, that's a whole other series of drawings. But let's look at this in relationship. Let's look at these relationships so we can make an analogy with the male reproductive system. That won't be too far off here. When you see a female supine, so if this is the umbilicus, and this patient is supine, the exits that you will see in a supine patient are the urethra, the vagina, and the anus. The urethra is the exit for, if you can imagine, this 
organ, the urinary bladder. The vagina is the exit or entrance, but the exit for the organ called the uterus. And the anus is the exit for the rectum, which leads to the colon. So these are exits for organs, the organ from the urethra being the urinary bladder, the organ from the vagina being the uterus, and the organ from the anus being the rectum into the colon. Let's see this from the side. In a sagittal view, and again, this is a female, in a sagittal view, to equate these organs and these exits, now you probably already know this, but we're going to draw it anyway. Here is the urinary bladder, so this must be the urethra. Let's go up here. This is the uterus. So this must be the vaginal exit, or the vagina. And then this, I'll just draw a real rudimentary there. So if the large part of the organ is the colon, and this is the rectum, then this is the anus. And so when you see a person sagittally, you would see them this way. And so we have urethra, vagina, anus, leading to urinary bladder, uterus, colon, just like it is here. Urinary bladder, uterus, uh, colon, or rectum. Uh, you can see the exits at the urethra, vagina, and the anus. So when you see the fetal pig, the structure of the female, when you're looking at the pig, from that side posture, I'm sorry, from that supine posture, as this is a fetal pig, what you'll see is the bladder. Do you remember that the bladder has the umbilical arteries to either side? Just for reference to make it easier to remember. Let's see the bladder exits at a urethra. The next organ we'll see are the fallopian, or the, I'm sorry, the uterine horn from the ovary. So this is an ovary. And the other ovary is behind the bladder leading here. Then that exits at the vagina. And then the next thing you would see would be the descending colon. Let me get a different color for that. The descending colon will be running down the body and then exiting behind the vagina. So here would be the urethra. Here would be the vagina, and here would be the anus, with this last bit being the rectum. I'm going to color the rectum, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to color the colon green, because it will be green in the fetal pig. And let's make the bladder yellow in addition to the urethra. And so now the tube in the middle, the tube in the middle attached to the uterine horns on either side and the ovary, because of course there would be another one over here, would be the vagina. So you can actually look at the fetal pig from the side and say Urethra, vagina, rectum. All right, and hopefully that will help you.
during your identification. Let's do the male reproductive system next. Remember that we did the urinary system. And the urinary system looked like this for the fetal pig. We made a distinction between the female having the short urethra and the male having the long penile urethra that goes through the penis. And the male urethra is here, and then the penile urethra would, I'm sorry, the penis would be the end, but the urethra is passing all the way through the entire length of the penis, and that provides the exit for both urine and semen. So we have to think about this system and then add the male reproductive system to it. This is the urinary system. And so that's the interesting trick with the male. Males have a combined urinary and reproductive system that's shared. They share the penis uh, and the, or the penile urethra, it's several parts of the urethra, inside of the uh, male reproductive system, they, I'm sorry, inside of the urinary system, they share the reproductive and the urinary system. So let's draw that again. All right. Here's the urinary bladder. Draw it first because it's easy to identify. I'm going to add back in the kidney. Remember, there's two kidneys. I'm only going to draw one. So here would be the left kidney, and this would be the left ureter. And then we'd have a right kidney. I am going to draw both. And the right kidney will enter at the back of the bladder here. And then we had a urethra. In the male, the urethra goes down and then it makes this J-shaped loop up and it follows the urinary bladder up and out through the penis. So this is the urinary system for the male. but we're gonna call it the male reproductive system because we've already done the urinary system. So now we're gonna add the reproductive structures in addition to this penile urethra. And we could call this end the penis, and we could call this the urethra. But essentially, this entire tube, at least from here to here, is the penile urethra. switch his names in the human male, but we don't need to worry about that in the fetal pig. So we do have a urethra, we do have a penis, but we have the penile urethra essentially that runs inside of the penile tissue, and you won't have to distinguish that. Let's look at the reproductive structures. I'm going to draw those in red so that you can see the reproductive system addition. Right, so Let's draw a testis. Singular for testes. Then we'll draw, then we have this thing that goes around it. It looks kind of like a question mark. Uh, well, when you see it, it will. It looks very much like the fimbriae that are attached to the ovary, right? And this thing, even though it's not listed on your lab sheet, I'm going to show it to you anyway, it's the epididymis. The epididymis. So sperm are born or made in the testis, and then they move through the epididymis when they're ready, when they're a bit more mature, and then they go up, up, up. This kind of makes a little hook over the top of the ureter. 
It goes to the back of the bladder and waits. So we think about sperm heading up the tube. And this tube has a specific name. It's akin to the uterine horns, but we will call it the ductus. I'm going to put vas in parentheses because you can also call it the vas deferens. So you can call it ductus deferens or ductus vas deferens or vas deferens. It's to your advantage to know both terms ductus and vas with the term deferens in case you see uh, either on the board exam and on your test. So we know that there are two testes and so just like I have another kidney over here We'll have another testicle going up, 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 over, and then coming around the back, looping itself over the right ureter and meeting in the middle, much like the uterine horns meet at the uterus. Right? But because there's no uterus here, we're going to meet at glands instead. And so you'll learn about the glands in the human male, but for now uh, we'll just say that the sperm coming from the testis goes up the vas deferens and waits to be let into the urinary system. There is a gland, a large gland on the back of the urethra on either side that you'll see on the male pig. And I'll just write it here, the bulbo urethral gland, in case you're wondering where some of the glands are. But I'd like you to think about it as the sperm coming from the testis. Uh, and the testis are both contained in tissue on the outside of the body called the scrotum. Let's think just for a moment about some other structures that are going to or from the testes. And I'm going to draw these in black. So think of it this way. There are three other structures that we need to pay attention to. A nerve, artery, and a vein. And since they are associated with the testicle, they're the testicular nerve, artery, and vein. So these are four structures all together. The ductus deferens, the nerve, the artery, and the vein. Those four structures are contained within the spermatic cord. The spermatic cord contains the ductus deferens, the testicular nerve, I'll write that, the testicular artery, and the testicular vein. This vein being very important because this is the source, or it carries, excuse me, the source of testosterone is in the testis, but the, the vein carries the testosterone Let's write that. Carries to the male body. It's made in the testis, but it travels up the testicular vein. So the testicular vein is of special importance because it carries testosterone from where it's made in the testis all the way back up into the body so it can be distributed. Right. So essentially you have four structures inside of something called the spermatic cord, which is a sheath around these four structures as they, as the testis descends, it takes these four structures with it uh, through the inguinal canal and outside of the body. Recall that uh, testis in the human males, testes live outside the human body. So they have to exit 
uh, two little holes at the inguinal canal. And that's the weakness in the inguinal wall where uh, males are specifically vulnerable to inguinal hernia because those, those openings still exist in order for the testes to uh, both receive nutrients from the arteries and uh, nerve stimulation and then also in the scrotal nerve and also to um, to feed testosterone back into the body along with the deoxygenated blood and to feed the sperm themselves back up into the body to wait behind the bladder for ejaculation. And the trick with ejaculation is that the bladder needs to be cut off in order for uh, sperm to exit the urethra and go out the penis because urine is poisonous to sperm. So we'll talk about those mechanisms in the lecture. To recap, we want to think about the reproductive system and the urinary system in a male as a shared uh, exit out the penile urethra. The system is very complex in that the male is mostly going to be using this apparatus, this entire affair for urination. But in the event of an ejaculation during sexual arousal, then the reproductive system, which is outside the body, has to move its, uh, its gamete or its sperm inside the body, and then it waits at the back of the urinary bladder. It receives some nutrition and some other things from the glands that are uh, helping it where, it, where it has, where it's waiting. And then the urinary system has to be essentially cut off so that the reproductive, so that the little sperm and the semen or the, the fluid that they're traveling in can all step into the urinary system pretty much and then travel through the urethra and out the penile, uh, I'm sorry, travel through the penile urethra out the end of the penis. Um, so if you think about it that way, most of the time the urinary system is what's being utilized and then occasionally the reproductive system gets utilized and when that happens the reproductive system has to essentially stop the urine from exiting and take over the urinary system. So it's a it's very intricate because you'll note that the male prostate is going to be back here and there are several glands involved. I did not draw the prostate because that's not on your fetal pig as far as structures that you need to know. Contained within a sheath, kind of like if you had a straw and you stuck four things in it. So if I had a tube and I put a vas deferens, a nerve, artery, and a vein in that tube, and they went to the testis. This tube is called the spermatic cord. And the thing you wanna pay attention to in the spermatic cord is the testicular vein. because that transports testosterone back to the body.